the wooden and aluminum steering wheel. When Formula One first hit the grid in 1950, the steering wheel was just that. A wheel. No screens, no buttons, no digital anything. Just a circle made of polished wood or aluminum, borrowed straight from road cars. These early wheels were so large, sometimes they measured up to 40 centimeters in diameter, all because the cars had no power steering. So if you wanted to muscle your Maserati 250F or Ferrari 500F2 around a corner, you needed real strength. Because of that, gloves were not just a fashion choice, as Damson Idris would have you believe. They were literally survival gear against splinters and sweat. Back then, a custom-built wheel meant sanding the rim smooth and hoping it didn't slip when rain hit. A wheel probably cost less than a nice dinner, maybe a few pounds worth of material, but it was the driver's lifeline. Fondio, Moss, Ascari, their wheels were simple circles of craftsmanship, nothing more. Cars got lower and cockpits shrank in the 60s and 70s. The wheels followed suit, shrinking in size to fit tighter spaces. Still, they had one job, steer. It was pure mechanical connection, man, machine, and the road. Every bump, every slide, every twitch came straight through this wooden rim, the compact leather and metal wheel. As Formula One cars evolved through the 1960s and 70s, one thing became clear, space was running out. Cars were getting lower, sleeker, and faster, which meant those big, old, dinner plate-sized steering wheels from the 1950s just didn't fit anymore. To solve this, teams began shrinking the wheel's diameter and switching materials. Out went the polished wood and shiny aluminum spokes, and in came stitched leather grips and light metal frames. The result was a smaller, sturdier, and far more practical design, one that could survive the brutal vibrations and g-forces of an F1 car doing 180 miles per hour. Drivers like Jackie Stewart, Nicky Lauda, and James Hunt all raced with this style of wheel. Their steering wheels were worn smooth by hours of racing and blisters from brutal circuits like Monaco and Nürburgring. These wheels still didn't have any buttons or electronics, they were purely mechanical. But they felt different. The leather grips gave drivers better control in wet races, while metal cores improved strength and reduced flex. It was all about driver feedback, the raw vibration of the tires, the resistance through corners, the heartbeat of the car in your hands. And while these wheels looked simple, they laid the groundwork for what came next. The Personal Fittipaldi Steering Wheel By the mid-1970s, Formula One drivers evolved into craftsmen who wanted precision, comfort, and individuality. And nobody embodied that better than Emerson Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi was one of the first drivers to treat the steering wheel as more than a piece of equipment. Partnering with the Italian manufacturer Nardi, he helped design what became known as the personal Fittipaldi steering wheel, a sleek, compact, leather-wrapped wheel built for grip, feel, and driver comfort. Unlike the generic metal and wood wheels that came before it, this one was tailor-made. The rim was thicker, the leather was soft, yet tacky, and the overall shape was optimized for quick, precise inputs during high-speed cornering. It wasn't just about performance, it was about feel. In his championship-winning McLaren M23, Fittipaldi also ran a version of the wheel with a single emergency ignition kill switch, one of the earliest examples of electrical control being integrated directly onto the wheel. It seems basic now, but at the time, it was revolutionary. It gave the driver an instant safety mechanism without reaching for the dashboard, a small step toward the multifunctional wheels of today. The success of the personal Fittipaldi design didn't end with F1. The collaboration with Nardi led to a full commercial line of personal racing wheels, which enthusiasts can still buy today, often with the same retro leather stitching and minimalist three-spoke design Emerson once gripped at 300 km per hour. In a way, Fittipaldi's wheel showed that the wheel could be personal, ergonomic, and smart. A driver's fingerprint on the car. In fact, it was the bridge between the old-school wheels and the modern ones that have millions of buttons on them. Suede Custom Driver Wheel this steering wheel came into existence in the 1980s because Formula One had become faster, more physical, and more punishing than ever before. Every corner demanded absolute precision, and every driver had their own way of achieving it. So they decided to make custom-made steering wheels. Teams started molding suede-covered wheels to fit the driver's exact hand shape. Mechanics would literally take a cast of the driver's gloved hands, then use that mold to shape the wheel's grip. The goal was to create something that felt like an extension of the driver's body, and the suede wasn't just for style, it was practical. 
Unlike smooth leather, suede stayed grippy when damp. During long races where drivers were sweating heavily inside cramped cockpits, this material helped maintain perfect control. It also absorbed vibrations better, softening the brutal ride of turbocharged beasts like the McLaren MP44 or the Williams FW11. At this point, the steering wheel was still relatively simple. No digital displays, no buttons beyond perhaps a radio toggle or ignition switch. But its importance was growing. As cars became more advanced, drivers demanded more feel, more feedback, and more comfort. Some drivers, like Ayrton Senna, became obsessed with wheel design, spending hours tweaking grip thickness and spoke angle until it was exactly right. Others preferred tighter rims or shallower dishes for quicker steering input on tight street circuits. Each wheel was a reflection of the driver's preference. Smooth for the elegant racers, aggressive and sharp for the late breakers, this was the last type of steering wheel before the face of the wheel became a control panel. But the craftsmanship, the personalization, and the focus on touch all came from here, the suede wheels. The Ferrari 640 Paddle Shift Wheel in 1989, Ferrari unveiled something that would change Formula One and eventually the entire automotive world. The car was the Ferrari 640, and the man behind its most radical innovation was John Barnard. Barnard wondered how it would be if F1 drivers could shift gears without ever taking their hands off the wheel. No gear lever, no clutch pedal. Just two paddles, one on the left to shift down, one on the right to shift up. It sounded insane but Ferrari let him cook. That year, Nigel Mansell debuted the Ferrari 640 at the Brazilian Grand Prix, and the world saw the first ever paddle shift steering wheel in Formula One. Mansell won that race, but the car's semi-automatic gearbox was wildly unreliable. The electronics overheated, the hydraulics failed, and gearboxes blew apart. Yet despite all that, everyone in the paddock knew they'd just seen the future. Within one season, every major team, Williams, McLaren, even Benetton, all started developing their own paddle shift systems. What Barnard had created didn't just revolutionize F1, it redefined driving itself. Sports cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, even luxury sedans would eventually borrow the same concept. The paddle system wasn't just faster, it was safer. Drivers no longer had to take a hand off the wheel to shift, meaning quicker reaction times and fewer missed gears. The car could stay perfectly balanced through high-speed corners, shaving tenths off lap times, and it made the steering wheel something entirely new, a command center. From this point forward, every control worth having would migrate to the driver's fingertips. The Butterfly Wheel This steering wheel came to be when teams started experimenting with carbon fiber construction, and it led to lighter, stronger, and more customizable wheels. The shape also began to change, moving away from the traditional round design to what became known as the butterfly wheel. And by 1994, most top teams had some version of a butterfly-style carbon wheel, but the first of these appeared in the early 1990s, primarily through teams like McLaren and Benetton, who were looking to improve driver visibility and ergonomics. The idea was simple. With the top and bottom of the wheel flattened, the driver could see the dashboard and on-screen readouts more clearly, while also having easier access to new buttons and toggles that were beginning to appear. The carbon fiber construction was the real breakthrough here. Compared to the aluminum or steel wheels before it, carbon fiber allowed for significant weight reduction, higher rigidity, and most importantly, room for embedded electronics, the McLaren butterfly wheel. By the early 2000s, F1 steering wheels had fully evolved into high-tech control systems, and McLaren was one of the teams leading that ship. Their butterfly wheel design, used by drivers like Micah Hakkinen and later Kimi Raikkonen, represented the next step in ergonomic evolution. McLaren's philosophy was minimalism and efficiency. The butterfly design, with its wide hand grips and open top, gave drivers maximum visibility of the dash and track. The buttons were organized symmetrically and color-coded for quick access. Every input was positioned so drivers could adjust settings without ever moving their hands from the ideal steering position. The wheel itself was built from carbon fiber and aerospace-grade aluminum, housing switches for traction control, engine maps, fuel mixture, and radio communication. Around this time, the number of steering functions skyrocketed from around 5 in the mid-90s to over 20 by 2002. The Ferrari Rotary Dial Wheel Where McLaren aimed for simplicity, Ferrari went for integration, packing as many controls as possible directly into the wheel. The most famous example came from the Ferrari F2004 and F2007 eras. 
driven by Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello, later refined for Felipe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen. This was the birth of the Manatino dial, a rotary switch mounted directly on the wheel that allowed drivers to control engine mapping, traction control, and differential settings in real time. It gave Ferrari's drivers enormous flexibility mid-race, adjusting the car's balance with a twist of the thumb. The idea came from Ferrari's road car program, merging F1 engineering with consumer technology. The same dial concept would later appear in production Ferraris. Ferrari's wheel looked busier, but it was designed to reflect their approach to racing. Full control, full adaptability. Drivers could fine-tune almost every variable from the wheel itself, which became an extension of the car's brain. By the end of the decade, every team had adopted some mix of these two ideas. McLaren's clean, functional ergonomics, and Ferrari's multifunctional integration. Together, they defined what we now think of as the modern F1 steering wheel, the Mercedes LCD hybrid wheel. When Formula One entered the turbo hybrid era in 2014, everything about the cars changed. Power units, fuel systems, and especially the steering wheels. And no team embraced that change more effectively than Mercedes-AMG Patronas. At the center of their dominance was the Mercedes LCD hybrid wheel, a $50,000 piece of carbon fiber engineering that served as the car's full command center. This was the wheel that Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg used during Mercedes' incredible hybrid era dominance. It wasn't just for steering, it was a full digital interface. The large LCD screen displayed live telemetry, energy deployment levels, brake balance, fuel modes, and hybrid recovery settings. Behind the wheel, drivers could manage over 40 functions, engine modes, differential settings, radio, pit limiter, ERS deployment, and even manual clutch calibration for launch starts. The key reason for this complexity was the new hybrid power unit, a combination of a V6 turbo engine and advanced electric recovery systems. Managing that balance required constant input, so Mercedes built a wheel that made every parameter accessible at a glance. Hamilton was instrumental in shaping its usability. He worked closely with the engineers to simplify the layout, grouping key functions by importance, and making sure that mid-race adjustments could be made instinctively. His feedback directly influenced the shape, paddle tension, and control placement seen in later Mercedes wheels. By 2016, the Mercedes wheel had become the gold standard for the hybrid era, both technically and ergonomically. It was light, durable, and astonishingly complex. In fact, it cost as much as a luxury car, yet each one was hand-built and tailored for its driver's preferences down to millimeter precision. Williams off-wheel display. By the 2020s, Formula One steering wheels had reached their technological ceiling. Every team had dozens of buttons, rotaries, and digital screens crammed into a single carbon shell. So Williams decided to rethink the formula entirely. The Williams FW43 and FW44 introduced what became known as the off-wheel display system. Instead of placing the information screen directly on the steering wheel like most teams, Williams moved it onto the chassis just above the steering column. You see, removing the display made the wheel lighter and cheaper to replace. It also improved visibility, giving drivers an unobstructed view of their key readouts without having to refocus between wheel and dash. And in case of a crash or steering wheel swap, the team didn't risk losing an expensive LCD unit. The wheel itself was still made from carbon fiber and titanium, but the design was stripped back. Smaller display interface, fewer redundant toggles, and a focus on essential controls like brake bias, differential settings, and ERS deployment. Drivers like George Russell and Nicholas Latifi helped refine this setup between 2020 and 2022, with Russell even commenting that it gave him less clutter and more focus. While some fans joked that it looked outdated compared to Mercedes or Red Bull, the Williams off-wheel display proved that not every team needs complexity to perform. It was a cost-efficient, driver-focused design that prioritized practicality over flash. For now, this is the final form of the F1 steering wheel, a blend of decades of innovation, from the simple aluminum circles of the 1950s to the data-driven command hubs of today. Drivers use the wheel to control the car but sometimes teams build cars that cannot be controlled by the rulebook. Here are the F1 designs that got straight up banned. Click on the video on your screen now.